Ladies and gentlemen, it is I, Hosh Nasi, and it is time for the first class in the crash course of amateur radio. Now, I already posted the intro. You can go watch that. That was really just the teaser to get your mind thinking about amateur radio. Today, I've got to get some of the stuff out of the way, the hard stuff, the nannying stuff. You know when you go to class, what is the first week of class? Talking about syllabus, talking about the books you need, talking about the homework, etc., etc. Today, i got to tell you, you're going to need to go get licensed, okay? I need to tell you that because there are actual real laws that you can violate by broadcasting on ham radio and on the frequencies that there lie in. So do yourself a favor, go get licensed. Now, don't look at this as homework. Don't look at this as like some nasty test you have to take. Look at this as a learning experience and, and a real valid learning experience. There is a lot of things you can learn from doing just studying for the ham radio license. For, and we're talking about the technician class license here. There's lots of books that are made by different people, one being someone named Gordon West. I'll post the picture and I'll post the link in the description to his book. It's available on Amazon. It is how I studied for my technician license back in the early 2000s. There are, he also makes one for the general. He also makes one for the expert, extra class. He does one for, for every bit of ham radio and they're awesome. They get you started quickly. They get you going fast and you're studying and you're good to go. The last time I studied and took a test was to get my general and I did all of it on my cell phone. The A double R L makes the apps to study on your phone. You can download them for free, study the, t the question pool and take practice tests. And it'll give you a histogram of how you've done previously in your attempts to pass the test. Go download the applications, go get the books and start reading because what does getting your technician class license grant you? Well, obviously it gives you the ability to talk on one of these. This is the uh, Baofeng UV3R before I talked about the UV5R. Also very inexpensive. I believe it's 30 something dollars for the UV3R. Getting your technician class license gives you access to all the VHF and all the UHF bands. It allows you to do things like uh, talk to satellites. It allows you to do TV. Yeah, there is TV. It allows you to do single sideband. It allows you to do all of these fun little APRS. It allows you to do all these fun little intricate things that you'd, you, you normally wouldn't have access to if you're just chunking on this thing and talking to people. And this is still vital. You still need this, right? So, so think about it like this, right? If you just buy these, right? If you just buy these and, and start just playing around with them at home, get a bunch of them for your friends, hand them out, and you're all just talking simplex to each other. Maybe you've got a quiet repeater that nobody's on. They don't really know that you're illegally broadcasting on. First, somebody knows, because a lot of the things like Broadcastify, it's a website, records most of the repeaters in your area. If you didn't know that, go check it out. You can listen to them. If you don't have a radio yet, you can listen on Broadcastify, so go check that out. If I'm saying it wrong, the, the link will be in the description. But at some point, You've got that base comm stuff down. And, and to be honest with you, that's the, 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 the scratching the surface of, of ham radio. Getting a couple of these, learning how to operate them like walkie-talkie style, that's like the base level of education, what I'm going to be talking about. That's going to be the next, the following two classes that come after this. It's going to be the basic walkie-talkie stuff. You know, how do you talk on this? How do you set them up? And how do you get like a family plan and a disaster? What are you gonna do? So do yourself a favor and just, just invest a little bit more money and a little bit more time. Buy the book. Hell, don't even buy the book. Just go download the ARRL app and start looking at the questions. If it looks like it's too hard for you, go buy the book. If you're kind of the engineer type like I am, just do the practice test and eventually you'll, you'll remember it and you'll be licensed and everything will be cool. You can go to town, you can do whatever you want. Because the really, really cool stuff, my favorite stuff is building antennas. I'm gonna talk about talking to the uh, International Space Station. I'm gonna talk about doing a satellite uh, repeater work. And I do it all with a radio like this big, this tiny little itty bitty guy, and an antenna that I made out of a tape measure and a PVC pipe, right? So go out, get your license. There's a, it's a 35 question test and it's, I think, a 400 question pool. And the tests you go take at these different testing centers, and if you need to find a testing center, you can find it at the ARRL website. And you go take the 35 question test, and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. It's very simple, it's very easy. 
I, I, I'm really hammering this home because I'm not going to talk about it for the rest of the series, and there are very legal repercussions. And I understand most of you know I'm an anti-statist type of person. I'm an anti-federalist. I don't like the fact that we have these aggression-based systems that force us to pay taxes and force us to do the th different things we do to get licensed, right? I don't like that, but at the same time, I really don't like jail time, and I really don't like people taking me away and making me pay fines. There was a guy recently in California that was using his radio to create spurious interference, which is a big thing, and the hams in the area did an investigation against him, and that's partially what ham radio operators do too, guys. That's a really cool part. They found him. They did an investigation. They determined he was at fault, and he had to pay $25,000 in restitution, right? Well, this is big money. This is big, fine money, okay? So do the right thing. Get licensed. Okay, now that's out of the way, I'll never hit on that again. Oh, you know what's a really fun thing? This is a really fun thing. There are events that you can go to, right, where you have, looks like a modified television antenna, and you, hold, and you hook it up to your radio, and you hold it out, and you kind of scan the area, and when you point, it's a directional antenna. It's a beam antenna you'll pick up a signal. That's called fox hunting. There are clubs, events, sporting events, they would call themselves, where you use a radio and an antenna like that to find a transmitting beacon. The first one to find it wins. There's somewhere you do a circuit. There's somewhere they make the, the, the beacon turn so that it's, it's not constantly broadcasting in the same direction and you have to figure out where it's coming from. Very fun, it's called fox hunting. And you use that same technology to triangulate on people who are illegally broadcasting, okay? Very cool. Hams like to police their own. It's, it's a fun group, and everybody thinks they're like FUDs and they're old guys in their mom's basements. Uh-uh. The guys that I hang out with, the guys that I'm involved with, they're out there doing stuff with their radios. It's involved with their everyday life. When you go shooting, when you go off-roading, it's our partner. It goes along with us. It's one more layer of preparedness that we can be. So let's talk about the series. What am I going to talk about for the rest of the series? Today, got the boring stuff out of the way. There's the syllabus. There's your permission slip. I want that printed and signed by your parents, and you can fax it to me that you can, you're can. you okay to be in the crash course. But what are we talking about? We covered the intro. That's done. I got my disclaimer out of the way, go get licensed, just do it. You know, I don't want to hear later that somebody that I got involved in radio getting a fine or is going to jail or something like that. So just do it for me. Do it for old Hosh Nazi. Okay, number two, um, I've already done I've, I've already done videos on this, so this is episode one, right? It's getting the, the boilerplate stuff out of the way. I've already done videos on this, but I'm gonna do another video on programming your radio, specif specifically the UV5R and I'm gonna walk through the functions in Chirp. It's gonna be highly GUI driven. All the most recent times that I've done these videos, and you can go look at it here, all the most recent times I've done these videos, I kind of quickly go through it. I'm kind of assuming that you guys are all computer savvy, and I shouldn't do that. So I'm gonna to go to the 101 level, and I'm gonna walk you through every explicit click to download from the radio, to modify what's on the radio, and then to upload to the radio. Now, I'm not gonna be able to solve the question of which repeaters are popular in your area, which uh, stations and frequencies are popular for public works and the sheriff and the fire department. You need to take what I'm gonna teach you and then try lots of different repeaters until you find the ones that work for you, you save that off, and you're good to go. But that's a talk for next week. Okay, number three. We're gonna do family planning and survival radio comms. What I mean specifically is, now that you have a familiarity with the radio, I'm gonna walk through kind of how to show your family how to use the radio, how to think a little bit differently than, than we think, the people that are interested in this, the people that wanna be involved. One of the reasons why I like this UV3R, there's no keypad. There's no buttons, hardly other than to turn it on and a couple of other ones. You turn this thing on, you click the little wheel on the top of the channel you want to talk to, and you listen. And if you need to talk, you click and you broadcast. That's the kind of stuff I'm going to be talking about. Family planning for radio. In an emergency situation, it's vital. Because think about it, right? You're going to charge this thing up, and you're going to hand it to your wife, and it's uh, got all the repeaters that you like to go on. She doesn't know how to use this, necessarily, and I'm not throwing women under the bus, but keep in mind, most people that watch my channel are guys. So She's going to throw this in her car. She's gonna go driving around with it. A month later, something happens, pulls it out, battery's dead, then what? What do you do? How does she get this to work? How does she make this work? Important stuff, important pieces of kit need to go with this radio that you give to your wife. We'll talk about that. 
class five, we're gonna talk about alternate power. How are you gonna power these things if you don't have a power supply? What are you gonna do? How do you do it? What do people do? What's the common ways of doing that? Number six is very prepper related. We're gonna do a little project, EMP proof radio comms and simple EMP proof radio comms. Like go down to the tool store and you're able to buy the stuff you need along with your radio and maybe some other odds and ends to waterproof and get ready for a potential EMP issue where you can have stashes of radios throughout your property or some other lo random location, some remote location. Seven, we're gonna talk about FRS, GMRS radios. Those are the ones you can buy in the, you know, on Amazon, Big Five, Best Buy, sporting and stores. It's not gonna be uh, an end all be all, but I'm just gonna cover the basics of why you might want them and what their value is, and also some of their disadvantages. Eight, we're gonna talk about APRS, which is packet radio system. It's basically like a way of taking a GPS signal, send it out over the radio waves, have it picked up by other people, and they're able to find your location along with nominal text messaging. I'm okay, broken leg, bite, snake bite, you know, whatever. Why is that important? We'll talk about it in the class. Nine, we'll go into HF radio, what's called shortwave, what's well known as shortwave, and particularly the, the non-standard modes. Like obviously everybody understands talking, right? Voice mode. We're gonna cover short scan TV and we're gonna cover uh, packet radio. Things I'm interested in, things that I like because they propagate a bit better. CW, Morse code, right? Morse code is like the best way to go because it propagates so far. Anyway, more on that later. And then to kind of cap the whole thing off 10 i'm going to talk about the crazy stuff you can do with these guys right i've used this radio to do aprs in the past right how do you rig it to do that well it's a bit of a project you're going to have to solder some wires and whatnot and then i'm going to talk about my satellite communication stuff if you want to talk to so50 which is the saudi sat 50 satellite you can literally walk out in the front yard and track it with your antenna, and you can talk on it like you talk on a repeater. And hopefully by the time we get there, you can be well versed in the whole thing. So my plan is once a week, I'm gonna release one of these videos, and we're just gonna walk through the whole thing like a class, post questions in the comments. You can contact me directly through all of the little communication things down below. I'm available everywhere, Instagram, Twitter, Google+, Facebook, you name it, I'm pretty much there. And yeah, let's make this interactive. You know, people have talked about possibly setting up a, a, a weekly net that we can all get on and talk, you know, for those of us that are already licensed. We can try to do that. A lot of this is just gonna be me planning these videos, which is gonna be hard enough, but by all means, you guys can set this up on your own and run with it, take the ball and go, and I can join in if, you know, if I'm not having to plan the whole thing and do it. That'd be great. All right, so a little long on this video. I'm gonna try to make these short so that you can, well, some of them are gonna have to be long no matter what I do but I wanna try to make them succinct and to the point that you can immediately go and use them. So please, please, we got a long weekends, couple, a lot of us have long weekends coming up. Just hop on Amazon, I'll post the link, go download Gordon West's book or, or go buy Gordon West's book. Also go download the apps. If you can steal away for a little bit of time and, and just maybe half an hour a day, half an hour every couple of days, believe me, you will enjoy it. It is fun to read about radio. I know it's nerdy as hell, but it is actually very fun if you can get past that little, a little hitch. So try it out, give it a shot. It would mean a lot to me. All right, guys, that'll do it. Share this video, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Thank you very much.